Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about noise mapping. There's a lot of confusion out there on noise and uh, I'm going to try another approach once again and see if we can get some more comprehension and understanding. So there's no such thing as soundproofing. I want you to get that term out of your acoustic vo vocabulary. With noise, nothing is proofed. Proof implies absolutism. There's nothing absolute about noise. You manage noise. You don't proof it. And the industry is full of this kind of marketing hype and nonsense. And it, it makes real companies like mine frustrated all the time. Because first, we have to get rid of a belief system that's completely baseless when it comes to the laws of physics. And it's just a big waste of time. So we have to undo all of this before we can even get to people to understand the truth. So let's try another approach here. Nothing is proofed. The process is called noise transmission. Focus on this word transmission. It's airborne energy striking a wall and then getting reduced. There's no this and zero. It doesn't happen. I have built structures my whole life and there's no such thing as proofing. You manage absolute stages proofing, there's really no use for that. An anechoic chamber, you, you're, you, you're thinking, okay, it has to have a low noise floor, but it's about reflection management, not necessarily noise transmission. So once again, you know, another misnomer, if you will, at the best case scenario. So it's a transmission of vibrations going from a snake to a worm. Remember, that's a video we did. So you take a big response curve and then you try to lower it. And the goal is to lower it below the level of the room and the required usage. So it's airborne energy into a solid surface. A room usage noise transmission must fall below the levels of a neighborhood. So let's think about that. Let's take a drum room. Drum rooms generate 120 dB of energy. There's a second largest energy producing source of any instrument. What's the first? A gong. We have a gong in our studio. It's 24 inches. We get 145 dB SPL out of that. No drum kit can do that. Maybe if a drummer could hit it hard enough, but they can't. So 120 dB is about the max. So we're going to put our drum room in a neighborhood where the ambient noise levels in the neighborhood are 65. So we're going to be twice what the neighborhood is. That's going to get a knock on your door and a ticket and a citation. And over time, or an arrest. Because cities these days aren't playing with noise. It's considered a health hazard. I get called to be an expert witness in court trials all the time when it comes to noise. So it's serious because you have liability now. You can cause somebody to have a health hazard, and that's liability. If you got deep enough pockets, you can afford it. Most people don't. So why don't you do it right from the beginning and not follow 95% of the nonsense you see on the internet? Most of those people that are telling you how to keep a room quiet never built a room in their life. And if they say they have, have them call me. I'll tell you they have it. Three questions I'll ask them. I'll know in, probably at the end of two. So what we got to do is we got to manage this noise. How do we know how to manage it? Well, we have to measure the noise in the neighborhood. We already know what the drum room's going to do. What we don't know is where that noise is going to go and what the frequency and amplitude of the neighborhood is it's called ambient noise level. Most neighborhoods we measure about 60, 65 dB decreases dramatically after 10 o'clock at night, up to 40%. Depends on where you're located. We do a lot of work in L.A. City never sleeps. New York, too. So those are exceptions to the rule. But most of the time, the noise floor drops dramatically after 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Why? Human activity ceases. People are going to sleep. Right? So we got to measure it. Now, we got to measure it over seven days. Because if you're a drummer, you don't want to have to say to yourself, well, I can't go in there on Thursday. Because the noise levels in the neighborhood are so low, people will be upset with my playing. No. 
You want to be able to go into your room, if it's a creative usage, and use it whenever you're creative, whenever the urge strikes you. So we measure over seven days. We measure pr frequency and amplitude. Those are the two things that we want to do. We want to look at the maximum pressure produced by the lowest frequency. Usually it's 30, 40, 50 hertz produces the biggest bump. That's what we got to design for because we all know from past videos that that kind of energy travels very long distances. We've measured kick drums at 350 yards from source. What chance does your neighbor have 20 feet away? No chance, okay? So our goal in this case, if our ambient noise levels in the neighborhood 65, our goal in this case is to make sure we don't output from our drum room anything greater than 65. I like to get down into the 50s. I like to fall about 20 points lower because you never know. So you want to build in an air rate. So that's our goal. We want to fall below the radar. What's the radar? The radar is the noise level in the neighborhood. That's what we're up against. How do we do that? Well, it's a series of different material types, different construction methodologies, different, 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 different. There's no one size fits all like they tell you on the internet. I read some of that nonsense, I go, oh my God. Anybody that follows that is going to fail. And here's the thing with noise. You're never going to get the money back. You build it into a room, you go to sell the structure, and you think the appraiser, when he appraises the property so you can get a sales price, it's going to give you extra value for a quiet room. You're dreaming. It doesn't happen. So you don't want to spend one dollar more for noise than you have to because you're never going to get it back. So the old carpenter adage of measure twice, cut once really applies here to avoid waste. So that's why we measure. We have processes that we can help you. We have apps. We send them. You download them on your phone. Follow our instructions. Take the measurements over seven days to two to three times a day. Record the data on an online data sheet, send it back to us. We send you a drawing. Build this and we'll guarantee the drawing if you build it right. If you cut corners, I'm not going to help you because that's what life is all about on the internet, cutting corners. Well, you can't cut corners with noise. It's, you won't get a result. And here's the problem. You cut corners, you call me and tell me it doesn't work. I'm probably going to hang up on you. But if I don't, I'm going to tell you something else you don't want to hear. You have to tear it out and start all over. So where's the sanity here? Between the internet nonsense and, you know, people's opinion of what they think they should do. It's a nightmare. And it's, I see failure after failure. It's discouraging. Not for me. For the drained bank accounts and the poor performance for people. There's the discouragement. Don't be part of that nonsense and mess. Fall below the radar takes numbers. We have to know because every material we use in our barrier or shell is based on the frequency and amplitude of noise. So we want to fall below the neighborhood noise. We want to fall below the radar. And the only way to do that is to know the enemy. Know how strong it is and what frequency range it's at. Noise mapping. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.